Over the span of three years, Gideon has amassed over 7.6 million subscribers across two very successful channels. He's a very polarizing creator, as you either see him as a menace to society or as extremely misunderstood. Hi, I'm the Inter Anarchist. I create high value documentaries on content creators. And today, I'll be taking you on the entire journey of Jadon Adams, aka Gideon. Gideon was born Jadon Adams on the 12th of December 2000. Raised in a Christian household in Houston, Texas, entering school, Gideon would find himself pretending to be someone who he wasn't and was struggling to fit in. I just like that ass felt like I wasn't accepted back then. And like, like niggas couldn't fucking like appreciate me for me. And like, that shit hurt, bro. That shit hurt like a bitch, bro. So he would go to YouTube to seek comfort by watching his favorite YouTubers such as I'm Dante, Your Rage, and KSI. After spending so much time being a consumer on YouTube, Jadeon would ultimately feel the urge to become a producer. So at age 12, he would do just that by making a channel and posting Call of Duty gameplay videos. Videos that would ultimately be lost with time. Throughout high school, Jadeon would continue to develop as a person and he would find himself a friend group that supported him and brought out his good energy. This led up to the 12th of February 2019 when Jadeon would post his first public video, a video titled I got suspended for hustling at my school. This view would mark the beginning of a new chapter in Gideon's life. For this business idea, what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to be buying sodas, chips, stuff like that. And we're going to be selling them at school. 2019 would be the year that Gideon would set his plans into motion, as he would post his second video on the 16th of February, only four days after his first. The video was titled, So You Think You Can Dance, and was a high school dancing competition with the grand prize of $25, because that's all he had at the time. Gideon's energy carried the video, as he got everyone in school to come together and to dance and spread positive vibes, a strong foreshadowing for Gideon. Gideon's future. His goal was to give everyone a positive memory to look back on, and even though the event didn't go to plan, he was still happy. All right, y'all, that shit was a disaster, man. I mean, I swear, black people could never do no shit organized, bro. I swear. But I'm not gonna lie, though. Even though it didn't go the way how I had envisioned, you know, it was still fun. You know, it got everybody outside, you know, camaraderie and everything. Because I'm not gonna lie, when, we, when these niggas grow up and they graduate high school, they're gonna think back on this. They're gonna be like, dang, remember when we had that dance battle outside and everything? So, yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. But, yeah, it didn't go the way I wanted. But, you know, maybe next time we could get it popping the way it should be. Going forwards, Judean would take his videos into the real world with a third video titled Does Size Matter? A video where Jadeon and his two best friends Manny and Shaq would walk around a shopping mall asking random girls if size matters. Even though Jadeon only had 30 subs at the time, both Shaq and Manny kept up with his energy, leading to comments such as, man, Shaq got me laughing when he started proposing. Everything would change on the 27th of February when Jadeon would post giving strangers the n-word pass. This video would help push Jadeon to reach 1,000 subscribers by April 2019. At first, Jadeon's content wouldn't be super Super viral, with most videos getting between 1 to 10,000 views weeks after upload. But that would change mid April 2019 when it would post his truly first viral video, a video titled Put the Gloves on Public Boxing. This video featured amateur boxing matches in his backyard. Even though Judeon himself got knocked out, this video was still a huge win as it would go on to gain over 5 million views. <laughs> This video would ultimately put Jadeon on the map, and he took advantage of the situation perfectly by creating innovative and unique ideas that hadn't been done before, with videos such as picking up girls in Goodwill clothes, picking up girls in 1700s clothes, and flexing obviously fake Gucci on strangers. From here, each of his videos began snowballing in views, until he ended the year with just over 100,000 subscribers and 10 million views. With Jadeon's growth rising, he was becoming more of a target for online attacks, and had to learn about safety on the internet. Aside from not oversharing personal information, the best method of online security of VPN services, as they offer not only protection, but also handy features for accessing blocked media. That's why I'm happy to tell you that I'm working with a VPN service that I personally use to protect myself, CyberGhost VPN. With CyberGhost VPN, all your traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel, making your IP address hidden and your data encrypted. In addition, thanks to CyberGhost VPN, you can access geo-restricted content from websites to unlock YouTube videos, Netflix shows, and even get games and subscriptions for cheap. We work together to get you an unbeatable offer for a quality VPN service to increase your online safety. CyberGhost VPN is available on all platforms and has a strict no logs policy, meaning your data is your data. You can use one subscription to protect up to seven devices, so don't hold back sharing it with your family and friends. And if you don't like it, there's a 40 day money back guarantee, so it's totally risk free. I'm certain you won't think twice about going back. Using the link in the description, you get four months and 83% off, making it just $2.23 a month. Jadeon would enter 2020 with the video Messing with Comedians at Comedy Club 
club. In this video, Gideon would go to a local comedy club and intentionally tell edgy and dark jokes. This is my, this is my best one. This was my, this was my best one. This is my best one. All right. What's funnier than slavery? The Holocaust. Gideon's content was still evolving, and part of the evolution was focusing more on Gideon rather than how it was in 2019 when it was split between Gideon and his friends. Doing videos himself allowed him to be more flexible with what times he could film and what ideas he could enact, which would ultimately help him pump out more and more content. But when everything seemed to be going well, things went south. When Gideon got stuck at 244,000 subscribers, he stayed at 244k for six whole months, losing subscribers with each and every upload. Gideon was getting close to deleting his channel. Like literally every time I would upload a video, just lose subscribers. And I was stuck at 244,000 for six months. I hate that number. I hate it with all my heart. Wow. <laughs> And it humbled me and I was just like, damn, if I could just have a filmer that like knew and like read my mind and stuff like that. And then I found Tim and he would help me, but there was this one day where I couldn't film a video that I wanted to because he had to work. I'm just driving home pissed at myself. I'm like, bro. And I'm not even pissed at him, I'm pissed at myself. Like it's like holding myself back. And I was broke. I was doing Uber Eats to get money. And I just called him and I said, yo V, like how much do I have to give you a month for you to work for me full time? And he gave me a number, literally sold almost all my electronics at my house that weren't necessity. It took me like two, three days. I came back, gave him the money, I'm like, let's get to work. From this point onwards, Gideon finally overcame the 244k curse and would go on to post a video which would leave a lasting mark on his channel forever. A video titled, They Banned Me, So I Got a Disguise. In this video, Gideon found an empty shoe palace box and took it to the store to try and return it. I'm gonna try to return an empty box. <laughs> Can I return these shoes? Oh, let, let's see, let's see. Let me ask, let me talk to my boss. Where the shoes at? <laughs> Things would quickly escalate when 4 minutes and 41 seconds into the video, Tyrone would say this. Passionate and staring. I'm going to tell you right now, don't ever step back foot inside that store again. Footlock is better anyway. My man is too. My is too. So what did Gideon do? Well, Gideon sought revenge. You know guys, I usually don't take things personally, but when you do a your mom joke on me, like, you know, this is what you deserve. I went above and beyond just to troll this man, just cause he said that. All I know is I'm fighting for my pride, my country's pride, my subscribers pride. Really, I'm fighting for the world's pride right now. So without any further ado, let's go get this nigga. This meant war, and sure enough, Gideon would return, only to get kicked out of the store once again. Hey man, sorry, you'll never see me again. And since you said something about my mom, I have to say it, your mom. I had to get you back. From this point onwards, Gideon was set on a mission to get some real revenge on Tyrone, and on the 8th of September, posted a video titled, The Manager Banned Me, So I Made a Diss Track. A video where Gideon returned to Shoe Palace, but this time, with a diss track. Tyrone. <laughs> Fuck Tyrone, go on, let me bone. Calling security, better leave me alone. I'm just trying to smash, give me that ass. Go ahead, do it real fast. Fuck Tyrone. Fuck Tyrone. Pussy ass nigga, bitch. This video would go on to gain over 5 million views and create an inside joke that would live on forever throughout the rest of his content. Gideon would end 2020 with 340,000 subscribers and 20 million views. Entering 2021 on the 22nd of January, Gideon would post a video titled Pranking a Professional Golf Instructor, a video where he would cause a ruckus during his golf lesson. God damn it! No! I'm embarrassed. There's like 50 people out here. The video would be followed up by another video titled Boxing Match of the Century. Punch. There you go. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. This video would go on to gain over 6 million views. And when everything seemed to be looking up for Gideon, things took an extreme turn for the worse. When at 3.30 a.m. on the 5th of February, two bodies were found deceased in an apartment. One of those bodies belonging to Shaquan Okio Evans, Gideon's childhood friend and day one collaborator and supporter. This strategy would hit Gideon hard. And on the 12th of February, he would post a video titled, Legends Never Die, Rip Shaq. A video where he would reminisce on his times and experiences shared with Shaq. Video, he literally stole the show and he made the video a banger. And I didn't think nothing of it after I dropped him off. I was like, you know, I just hit him up for a video. Then I hit him up for another video, and then another video, and then another video. One day I just hit him up to hang out. And then before I knew it, I was calling that man my little brother, like, he also ended the video with unreleased clips from an unfinished video that they were working on at the time he passed. I can't do a cartwheel. Oh, you can't do a 
I can't do a cartwheel. Oh, you be Two weeks later, on the 25th of February, Jadeon would bounce back with a new video, a video titled Returning to the IHOP I Destroyed Four Years Ago, a lighthearted return where Jadeon would reveal a tragic toilet tale. I advise you guys to skip to this part of the video, but if you guys want to see what it looked like, three, two, one. Hey yo! Hey yo! Jadeon would ultimately decide that he would return to the store four years later to apologize and give the employee who had to clean it up $100. Do you remember this funny chance? Like, this isn't to be rude or anything, but like, do you, do you remember this scene by any chance? Yeah, we, we had a police report for that one. Wait, wait, what did you say? Yeah, I think we had a police report for that. You had a police report for this? Mm -hmm. So you remember this? Yeah. Did you clean it up? I didn't clean it up. Oh, you Someone didn't? Someone else did. Is what? that person in here? No, why? I just wanted to come like and just like apologize. It was me. I did that. So you came in here just to take a picture and apologize to that person? Yeah, basically. It's 15 at the time. I was wrong for that. This video would go on to gain over 3.7 million views, which would be nothing compared to the next video that he would post, taking a bath during online college classes. A video which would become Judeon's second most popular video, sitting at over 17 million views. This video would take Judeon's growth to the next level, leading him to a great second half of the year, going from 600,000 subscribers in March, over to 1 million subscribers by September. He would dedicate this milestone to Shaq with a sub count live stream. M's in the fucking chat. Let's fucking go, nigga. A milli, a milli, a milli. <laughs> a milli, a milli. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. It's been a long, it's been a long way. <laughs> fuck, still has some of the guys. Still has some shit in the guys. By now, Judeon had figured out the formula of creating viral content and would continue to pump out quality and innovative videos. Judeon's unique ideas brought new viewers in, whilst his humble and humorous personality kept his old viewers returning to each upload. It was also at this point that Judeon started getting into streaming on his second channel, Judeon Premium, and the channel would be an instant success, leading to Judeon reaching 100,000 subscribers by November simply by posting React and Storytime streams. Entering 2022, Judeon decided to expand his reach over to Twitch, since the platform offers a better chat and general viewing experience. Jadeon would stream daily for the first two weeks of 2022, until the 13th of January when he would get cancelled and banned off the platform. If you're from Pokemon, uh, I mean, if you're from <laughs> Pokemon's chat, Yo. and you have a penis, I'm gonna tell you this right now, she is not gonna fuck you, bro. I don't care how much you donated, I don't care how many hours you watch her, she is not gonna fuck you, bro. She has a man's. Bro, you, you probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. But I'm sorry. I'm going to break the fourth wall. And spoiler alert, she's getting dicked down every night. Jadeon would encourage his viewers to type L plus ratio in a stream and to DM people in a chat, which led up to Jadeon receiving a 14-day ban on Twitch. Jadeon was officially under fire, and there were several news articles adding fuel to the fire, leading to Twitch ultimately changing their decision to expand the 14-day ban to a permanent ban. Whilst on a service level, getting banned on Twitch may seem like a minor inconvenience, especially due to Jadeon's huge following and influence on platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, the ban would have an impact bigger than expected, due to Twitch's community guidelines restricting streamers from featuring banned or suspended users on their channel. This meant Jideon was instantly cut off by a lot of big streaming influencers, simply due to the fact he could no longer collab with them without risking their own channels being terminated. On the 3rd of February, Jideon would tweet this. The tweet would be followed up two weeks later on the 16th of February, when Jideon would post a collab video with Pokimane, ending the beef in the most wholesome way possible. In your opinion. <laughs> I put the pee in poking. Wow. This is my first ever mukbang, so. I think it's more so pronounced mukbang. Mukbang. Even with Judeon making up with Pokey and the controversy being over, Twitch still wouldn't unban him, forcing Judeon to move back to his second channel to stream. And this was arguably a blessing in disguise. Streaming on his second channel would cause cataclysmic growth, as he would continue to react to popular content and repost it on his second channel posting several times a day, propelling his second channel to reach 1 million subscribers by May, and his main channel to reach 5 million. On the 4th of August, Judeon would post a video titled, Twitch banned me, so I snuck into TwitchCon. The goal of the video was to sneak into TwitchCon to take a photo of Tommy in it and meet other streamers whilst undercover. However, things would quickly go downhill when Jadeon began to be accused of various things from Tommy Innit stands. After the event was over, Tommy Innit would call out Jadeon on a stream, throwing all sorts of untrue allegations and claims. Being super rude and just a, a prick. 
Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't see him earlier and sort him out. Uh, I spoke for a long time with the Twitch staff about it afterwards. I didn't really know what to do, and they were so caught up in making sure I was safe that they didn't check up on you lot. Now, this happened, you know, some dude shouting at my fans, shouting at you lot, uh, just being mean with no purpose. You know, first thing I did after speaking to the staff was, was message everyone that was affected by this dickhead and just check that they were okay. This sort of misinformation to be put out from such a large creator caused a lot of people to go against Gideon for no reason whatsoever. Fortunately, Gideon had it all on camera, and the misunderstanding was resolved when Gideon and Tommy in a contact each other behind the scenes, and Tommy apologized for what he had done. Gideon was quickly becoming a hot topic for drama channels, and would find himself in the headlines of the H3 podcast and Hassan Arbi streams. Whilst Gideon would defend himself and speak out when he felt he was done wrong by, he wouldn't act maliciously towards others, and often opted to talk things out directly, either on stream or behind the scenes when the cameras are off. On the 25th of August, YouTube legend Corey X Kenshin would post a YouTube callout titled YouTube Racism and Favoritism, a video discussing a huge problem with how the platform treats its creators. Whilst it's commonly known that Twitch is a platform which favours women over men, on stream, Gideon would discover a streamer known as Kamika, a streamer who made waves for having intercourse live on stream. Gideon contacted Kamika on stream to ask how long the ban was for, and he found out that the ban was only for seven days. This outrageous sexism would lead Gideon to press a hit piece on his main channel titled Twitch, Sexist and Favoritism, a video inspired by Corex Kenshin's video where Gideon would call out Twitch for how unfairly they treat their creators, especially the male ones. And that's the story of Gideon up until now. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And don't forget to click the link in the description to get a special discount for CyberGhost VPN for only $2.23 a month.